Yo, what's poppin' everybody? This is Sabre Finding 4 and today I have a deck analysis for Gothitelle XL Gore. That's right, we're doing a Gen 5 deck analysis today. Uh, before you know it, even the 5th generation of uh, the TCG is showing its age. Uh, Jason Klesinski has already uh, finished his articles on Gen 5 covering the 5th generation of the Black and White series. And I decided, hey, you know what, since I've done this for all of the other eras too, might as well do a few deck analysis on black and white. Now there's quite a few different cool decks, even though black and white it does have a lot of uh, disadvantages when it comes to its formats because of the rule changes for the worst and what have you, but most of the decks were basically EX focused decks, It's I'm not even kidding like the emphasis on those basic EX Pokemon back then, but one of the top decks and one of the best decks that revolved around just a bunch of stage 2 and stage 1 Pokemon is this Gothitelle XL Gore deck right here. So for those of you that don't know, this deck might seem kind of crazy. You know, so many different stage 2 and stage 1 lines all together. Uh, 21 Pokemon, only 4 energies you guys can see here. It might look crazy, but I'm going to explain how this deck works. Basically, this deck has the purpose to make the ultimate sort of lock where your opponent can't really do shit. Uh, with Excel Gore right here, uh, you use deck and cover, you're going to do 50 damage, and the defending Pokemon will be paralyzed and poisoned. So most of the time, you know, instant paralysis effects don't exist, and if they do, they have some heavy costs. Hence why Excel Gore, once it uses deck and cover, you're going to shuffle this Pokemon and all cards attached to it back into your deck. So you get to do this attack, and then this guy is going to go back in the deck. Now... What you want to do after you make this attack is promote this Gothitelle right here. Uh, with Magic Room, this ability is basically the same as Trevenant's. As long as this Pokemon is active, your opponent can't play any item cards from his or her hand. Now, this Pokemon does seem significantly weaker than Trevenant being a stage 2, uh, having, you know, uh, kind of a worse attack and not really as great of as HP for a stage 2 compared to Trevenant. But you gotta remember, this is the black and white era, Trevenant wasn't released yet, and this card was very cool, was very strong. Uh, I've got the Gothitelle right here, from Legendary Treasures, the original version is from Emergent Powers right here, I don't own this one. But this is basically what you wanted to do with this deck, the basic combo. Uh, you also have a few other Pokemon to do some other tricks, like this Dusknoir right here with Sinister Hand, there's a couple of different versions for this. To, or at least to the original one on Boundaries Cross and the secret one for Plasma Blast. You can, as often as you like, you may move one damage counter from each of your, from one of your opponent's Pokemon to another one of your opponent's Pokemon. So one of the most broken abilities. Uh, I mean, all of the Dusk, most Dusknor cards usually have a very good ability, lets you do damage manipulation or other very strong effects. But this is basically the gist of the deck. Now I'm going to go through it and analyze it. Uh, once again, this is Jason Klasinski's list. I usually just get decks when I do deck analysis from that guy, since he has them on his WordPress page. Might as well get a deck from a master, a guy that is accomplished, and he play tests a lot with all of those decks, make sure it's the best version. Okay, so we got the three Shelmets for the Excel Gore, three Shelmets and two Excel Gore. Uh, there's quite a few options in the Black and White era. Uh, he's using the one in Plasma Blast that you can do. Yawn, defending Pokemon is now asleep. So it makes sense. You know, a little bit of a good uh, basic attack. Maybe you get lucky, as we've seen with the Malamar decks, with the Inkay putting defending Pokemon asleep. You might get lucky. So three of these, two of the Excel go with deck and cover. Only a 1-1 one, one line for Duskull and Dusknoir. And you only you only have one Duskull option, this one, 50 HP from Bound is crossed, and you confuse right. Uh, it might seem kind of crazy, just a 1-1, one, one, not even a stage 1 line, and especially with the rare candy, how it was in the black and white era. But, you know, this, this deck is all about, you know, doing precise shit, uh, controlling your opponent, not misplaying at all. And you'll need a little bit of luck, I would say, but it's very powerful. It's definitely a top deck from that era. Now, when it comes to the Gothitelle line, we're maxing it out. He's maxing it out with four of her, or him, I guess. And 
it's it's important because you want this guy active all of the time uh, once you're using deck and cover. Even if you're not using deck and cover, at least if you have Gothitelle in the active position, it's going to be a 130 HP Pokemon just to going to give one prize, and you get that magic room. Your opponent can't play item cards. At least you're having your opponent be locked out of items, you know, if you're not doing your whole strategy as you get ready, because you're going to need time to get ready with this kind of a deck. You need to bring out a lot of different Pokemon. Now, the line is you got to max out the Gathitas, uh, four of her, or him. Man, I keep saying her. Uh, yeah, it's a very feminine Pokemon. It's actually one of my favorites from Black and White. I trained a lot of them. Uh, but yeah, uh, Gafita, you also have a bunch of options in the Black and White era. Uh, he's using the one from Emergent Powers, and I've got the reprint right here in the Legendary Treasures that does a little wink. Once again, it's because you can do Hypnotoxic Gaze. It's basically your one energy attack. You just put the opponent to sleep. Uh, it's good. I think I'd rather have the one that can do a little bit of damage, like 10 for 1 and 20 for 2. Uh, there's another one from Boundaries Crossed I think I like better. But this one is probably the best one. Uh, Gotharita, one of her, one of, damn, one of this guy. Uh, this one is definitely not the best one in my opinion. He's running this one from uh, Legendary Treasures. This one is a Legendary Treasures version, but once again, uh, the Double Slap one and Psybeam one, you get it from Emergent Powers too. It's not the best one. In my opinion, the best one would be from Boundaries Crossed for Gotharita. It can do 10 for 1 Psychic, and it also puts the defending Pokemon to sleep. I think that's the best one. Also has a better 3 energy attack. This one, I guess you can do Psybeam and do 20 on Confusion, but I think it's not the best one. I'm showing his list exactly as he has it over at WordPress uh, on his article page there, but I don't think I would run this Gotharita. I'd change it for another one. Uh, Max not the Gothitelle. Uh, you're not going to use its attack, uh, Mad Kinesis, uh, needs Psychic Energies to boost the damage, but you're not going to use it, you only have 4 DC. And we have a few other Pokemon, these are the, the main, I guess, to make the combos. Got another stage 1 line, you got one Muna and one Musharna. So, what I probably wouldn't run these cards in my deck, uh, if I made this deck, but... You know, his, he's the master, so we're going to show off his deck, how he made it. But the reason why he's running these little this little one Muna Musharna line is because of long-distance hypnosis. Uh, once during your turn, you may flip a coin. If heads your opponent's active Pokemon, it's now asleep. So it's basically trying to stall your opponent out, get lucky. And as you try to set up, you're going to need a few turns to get all of your guys out, and you're not going to attack immediately. Also... Uh, if you if you get Tails and your Pokemon is asleep, it doesn't really matter that much. But this is the point of Muna, and then later on you're going to evolve into it to Masharna. With Forewarned, this is basically the same ability as the new Pidgeotto from Team Up. I'm pretty sure it's exactly the same. It's a Pokedex. You reveal the top two cards of your deck, choose one, put, the in, put it into the hand, and then put the other one back in the top. Okay, so it's not at the bottom, it's on the top. But it's essentially you draw a card... You know, acrobatic style, you get the option of two. So, I mean, I guess it makes sense. You're going to help stall them out a little bit and then draw cards with Misharna. Uh, but there's a lot of a lot of stage lines here. I mean, now that I think about it, this does seem kind of crucial to slow your opponent down. But I wonder if there's something better you can do. Uh, so it's one, two, you know, three, four different uh, stage lines. And we have a few other basic Pokemon too. Uh, another very important key Pokemon in this deck is new here. I only have one new X. I don't know how this happened. I used to have a bunch, but it seems like I traded them. This one is from Legendary Treasures, the reprint one, and the original one is from Dracut's Exalted right here. Uh, with Versatile, what you can do is basically copy any of uh, any attack from the field, any Pokemon you play, both yours and your opponent. And what you want to do is use deck and cover with this and you don't even have to uh, I think when you use deck and cover with new you do not have to uh, shuffle new back in the deck uh, you don't get that effect because it says uh, you shuffle uh, this Pokemon and all cards attached I think I think the combo is that it stays if you use new 
uh, it's going to stay, it won't get shuffled back in, but e even if it does, it's just a basic Pokemon, and if you, you, ha you have your XL go on the bench and you use Mew so that you don't have to worry about evolving every turn, I think that's the point. Indeed, indeed. Yeah, I think if it said Excelgar, shuffle Excelgar back, then Mew was going to stay. But because it says this Pokemon, I think you have to shuffle Mew back anyway. Oh well, that's the combo. And we have one Keldeo EX to get that board control. He does run a bunch of float stones in this deck. You know, this sort of uh, card is very important in the black and white era. Because of Hypnotoxic Laser, because of all this sort of... Uh, combos you can do with this Excelgor. There's another deck that you can use Excelgor and use Flygon to just do damage as opposed to get the item lock. So that's very important. And if your opponent uses a Keldeo, you definitely want to get that guy in the active position and get that guy paralyzed and kill him quickly so that they don't use it to get out of the lock. Uh, the efficiency of this deck is that normally when your opponent is paralyzed, their best way out would be things like Switch or Escape Rope. So if you can block those with Gothitelle, your opponent will be essentially stuck. So if you play your cards right, you can make like a perfect lock and just completely control your opponent. They won't be able to do absolutely anything. So yeah. Alright, so these are all the Pokemon. Now for the Trainer Skeleton. It's a really big one, even though we have a lot of Pokemon, because there's only four energies here. So the first one is going to be... Okay, you went too far. Computer Search, it is the ace pick of choice. Maximize consistency as much as possible. That's why he runs this one. Uh, it's all about consistency in this deck. Get your dudes, get your combo pieces as soon as possible and set them up. As soon as you get all of them and they start working, then you should win. Your opponent probably won't be able to fight back. Their best bet is to just uh, dismantle your strategy, You know, kill some of your combo pieces while you struggle to get replacements. And if you don't have everybody down, you know, you won't be able to make the combo locks. So, computer search, maximize the consistency. Then we got two level ball. Uh, there's a lot of different small Pokemon in here, so you can use this to get anything. Uh, there was no nest ball back then, of course, so this was going to be your method to get basic Pokemon too. Get those small basic Pokemon. Indeed. Then we got two Pokemon catcher right here. Uh, Pokemon catcher before the X and Y era. The effect was a complete lie center. You know, you didn't have a fl you didn't have to flip a coin. So this was gust of wind. You could grab basically anything, and this was mainly here for Keldeo above all. Like he mentions in his article, get that Keldeo stuck there because once that guy has the float stone, he could uh, get over your lock because this deck doesn't have ability lock. It's the only thing it doesn't have really. So use this to grab the Keldeo and. Get him stuck there so that it can't retreat and then kill it as soon as possible. Then we have a few typical stuff you expect to see. You know, four or candy, you gotta max this out. You have a bunch of different stage uh, two lines here. Well, I mean, you only have two, but uh, you know, it's important to get Gothitel out. It's important to get that uh, Duskenor too. You know, do the damage manipulation. Get a Pokemon stuck, and with this guy, you just. Get prizes in your opponent's bench while he struggles to do anything. Indeed. Uh, then we got a max amount of Ultra Balls. Uh, just ditch useless cards you don't need or multiples. Search whatever you need. Maximize consistency. Just thin your deck. You know, make your ends, Chloruses, and Junipers even more efficient. You know, all about consistency. No holding back. This is why you max out Ultra Ball in this deck. And then we've got... Um, one of the town map just to reveal your prizes know what you know what they are and grab exactly what you need remember you got to get a bunch of different stage lines here and precisely have them down you know you can't have one and not the other like if you have excelgor and you're not don't have gothitelle you know the combo is not complete if you have uh, either one the combo is not complete if you got like Maybe you need Duskroar, you don't have him down. It's not mandatory, but eventually you're probably going to uh, need to get him there to get KOs on the bench, manipulate the damage. So, you know, you need a lot of shit. That's why get precisely what you need from the prizes. Uh, one tool scrapper, this is a tech card. I guess to get rid of tools, 
on Garbodor. Garbodor is one of the Pokemon that will shut the strategy down if you're not careful. It's going to shut down New. It's going to shut down Gothita, which is why you know this sort of deck isn't invincible. But the idea is, once you do get rid of the tool, if they brought out Garbodor before you brought in Gothitelle, as long as you have Gothitelle active, you know, Garbodor won't be able to attach a new tool. So, that's the point. So, it's it's not like it's an auto-loss, even against Garbodor. You can out that Pokemon. Right, right. Now, one of the important cards I probably should have talked about first is this Tropical Beach. A maximum amount of these. So... Many of you might not know about this card, but you might you might know about it because it's pretty famous. Uh, this one is the World's 2011 version. There's also a 2012 or 13, I think 2012 version. Yeah, not 13, but this is one of the most expensive cards and very powerful cards, tournament cards. You only got this if you if you were like a world uh, finalist or world's uh, top it world participant i think i don't remember but it has to do with the world championship there's not a lot of these cards around physically or in tcg online uh, but jason does say you gotta run four of these in this deck to maximize its consistency and it's pretty important like i've said you don't attack in the early game so you know you use your ultra balls search what you need and then fill your hand with tropical beach easily it's just a fantastic stadium it's probably going to help you out more than your opponent so max this one out for sure. You want to see it as soon as possible. My guess is fill your hand. So you kind of have to run it. If you don't have it and you want to build this deck, you know, I wouldn't say be discouraged, but, you know, it's important. And this deck is also kind of old. Uh, normally this, this is completely legal and expanded. Like you can still run it if you want to. Like I, I am missing some of the cards here, as you guys can see. But this deck is like a completely legal expanded deck still uh, since it's black and white this is this is why i'm showing this on tcg online as opposed to using scans like the other eras okay but yeah tropical beach very great card maxing this one out then we got our well let's talk about the tools first before i get to the supporters we do have a few important tools the float stone this one is very very important you put this on your keldio get that board control and you want to put this on Gothitelle too, so you can retreat, you know, move your Gothitelle and then attack with Excelgo or Mew, shuffle Mew or Excelgo back in the deck, and then promote another Gothitelle. Retreat again, you know, rinse and repeat, get that perfect, perfect lock, and your opponent won't be able to do anything. But Flowstone is an important part of the combo. That's why you run three. Uh, once you do have Gothitelle out and your opponent can't use Tool Scrapper to remove them, then you're good to go, so you don't have to worry too much about it. And then we have one of these silver mirrors. Now, many of you might once again not know about this card. This is strictly an Team Plasma uh, anti-card. Uh, the Pokemon that has this tool on it, you're going to prevent all effects of attacks, including damage to that Pokemon. Team Plasma Pokemon were really popular and really powerful during the Black and White era. So this is sort of a, a, a little counter to them. It's not completely necessary. You could probably take it out for another consistency card, like another level ball or something. But he chooses to run it. It's actually a good card. I used to run it too in many of my decks back then. You know, there was a point in time where just Team Plasma Pokemon were everywhere. You could just attach, even if you were playing it like a shitty deck, you didn't have all the cards. If you had this on like one of your Pokemon and they couldn't do anything, you know, normally they didn't have any outs. So it was very powerful. You could just win cheap games easily just by having this card. Yep, yep. And these are all the, you know, items. You know, just a lot of different different ones to make the combos. The supporters are going to be pretty typical for the black and white era. You max out the N. There was no VS Seeker, so you wanted to have your max amount of Ns. Use this card early to draw six. And later on, you were going to disrupt your opponent nicely. Multiple Scholars, three Scholars in here. Grab those rare candies, grab those necessary cards. Man, you can even grab Tropical Beach and turn Scala into a good draw supporter in a way. If you manage to have a, a bunch of Ultra Balls and thin your hand. So it just makes a great combo altogether. And then we have the three Juniper. Very nice card still, or back then especially. 
uh, discard your hand, draw seven, of course, mandatory, gotta run it. And then two chorus. You know, between all the Ultra Balls, the Level Balls, and you just have a lot of basic Pokemon anyway. Like, how many do we have? We have 3, 7, 8, uh, 10, 11, I think it must be like 12. So you're going to fill your bench pretty quickly. And Chorus is going to be really good, especially if your opponent fills, fills their bench too. You know, the, these were basically the best supporters. Like, all the decks just ran these supporters for the most part. You didn't run anything else. Maybe the numbers were slightly different, but you definitely were running your Chorus, your N, Synth, uh, not Cynthia, Juniper, and then a number of Skylas. And then last but not least, we just have four energies, just four DCs. All you have to do is just use deck and cover. It's the only attack you want to use. Get that combo. And if you get that perfect lock, eventually your opponent is going to lose. You know, even if you just do 50 with poison, if they can't do shit, they're just basically toast anyway. It'll only be a matter of time. So just four DCs, that's all you need. Between all of the tropical beaches, you know, the hand thinning with ultra balls and your big draw supporters, uh, draw a lot of card supporters, you're probably going to see it. You don't need that many. And remember, even though Enhanced Hammer was around, I think, once you get Gothitelle, you're immune to that shit too. So don't worry too much. Uh, there was no way to recycle the DCs back then, but you still had enough to get the job done. So this is the deck, guys. Uh, I'm pretty sure I mentioned all of the numbers for the cards. Yeah, you got three Shelmets, two Excelcor line, a four Gothita line, you got two Mew, just a one Duskmore line, one Musharna line, one Keldeo. Uh This was definitely a top deck. Uh, once again, if you want to drop the Gothitelle, there's also like the Sand Slam or Flygon version. You just put that guy in and you just increase your opponent's damage counters if you were afraid that you didn't want to go with a lock. Uh, that's what you wanted to do. That's another thing you could do with this sort of a deck, deck variant. But very nice deck in the Black and White era, a very unique deck, one of the strongest back then. And I'm really glad I got to show it to you guys. I never actually managed to use this deck myself. I do have a lot of the cards, but uh, it, it's not like my kind of deck, but it, it's very fun, to be honest. It's, it seems like it's one of those lock decks where I think I could get behind, uh, even though normally it wouldn't be my cup of tea. Anyways, guys, this has been Saber Wolf 4 Hope you guys enjoyed this deck list. If you want to learn more about it, uh, Jason has this deck on his articles, and I just, I always mention uh, that guy and the stuff he does, uh, I'm not getting any money, I promise, and it doesn't matter even if I did anyway, but I just check those articles out and I use them for my videos, so I just think it's fair to just shout him out. If you guys want to check it out and find, find out about the deck and just other retro eras, see the decks from back then, and just very good information for the TCG. It's just Retro Pokemon TCG, Jason Klasinski. Google that. It's a WordPress page, and you'll find everything you need. But hope you guys enjoyed. Hope you guys subscribe. Leave a like and share this video with your friends. Thank you guys, as always, for watching. My channel is an excellent hub for all things TCG, so I hope you guys subscribe. Say Rovine 4, and we'll say... Yeah.